Okay, so the last principle of training that we're going to speak about is the, one of the most prevalent ones right now during COVID-19, and that is detraining. So detraining is also known as reversibility, and it's the process whereby gains made through training are reversed or lost to varying degrees when your training stops. So the gains made through training can be maintained, lost partially, or lost completely, depending on a number of factors. So what was your immediate previous training background? What was the level of training or the training age that you, that you had? How many years were you training? The fitness component that we're stressing and the length of the layoff. So if you've done nothing during COVID-19, that's almost a 12 week layoff um, overall. So when we speak about the previous duration of training, um, that would be the duration of the immediate uh, previous training background. That'll influence the time it takes to detrain again, so to lose your fitness benefits. If you were training, uh, let's say we were talking about a preseason in, in football, for example, and your preseason was six weeks, and we look at a 28 week season, which would be a dream season for most Gaelic footballers, then the gains made during that six week preseason will be gradually lost throughout the 28 weeks, um, and you'll return to a baseline in, in an early point during that in season. And it's likely to occur if the player doesn't complete some sort of maintenance conditioning program during the in-season, which should typically happen. Um, we see those strength and power gains from pre-season uh, made really in a short period, and they can be lost if we don't keep reapplying those stresses and stimuluses during the season um, with maintenance phases um, during the program. So there is also a difference between a well-trained athlete and possibly a novice or beginner athlete when it comes to detraining. So a well-trained adult athlete who would have a couple of years under their belt of training may not totally lose their fitness that they've gained even after an extended period of, of layoff. Um, there's been studies that have examined the effects of the layoff from training or competition in, a, in elite weightlifters, and it showed that the weightlifters had trained for 24 weeks and had made a 30% improvement in their one repetition max. Um, and we're talking about a squat here. Um, they then had a four week holiday and uh, they detrained essentially for those four weeks. And after that layoff, it showed a 10% 10 per 10 reduction in their strength levels. Um, they then continued the layoff from training. And after 12 weeks, the reduction in strength extended to 15% from peak gains. So the point here is that even though there was a reduction in strength after the 12 week layoff, the level of strength remaining was still well above what they previously had before they started that 24 week block of training. So if you've done training before all this, you're gonna be in a pretty good shape and particularly if you've kept it up. So the maintenance of strength gains in well-trained athletes, even after that extended period, is primarily due to their well-established baseline fitness level. And so loss as a result, as a result of that detraining can be you know, fairly quickly recovered. And further, the, the, that adaptation process they're going to go through when they get back to training will start at a higher level. So they're not going back to where they were previously, provided that layoff period is not an extended one. And they've done maybe a little bit of maintenance work, even with body weight stuff. Uh, they've kept their training up. So once an athlete is trained for several years, his or her reduction in fitness as a result of that detraining for several weeks will really rarely ever return to the fitness of their pre-training uh, age years back. Uh, however, untrained uh, individuals who wouldn't have a high training age, uh, who increase strength by about 20% during that eight week period, uh, during an eight week period, they'd lose 18% of the gains after five weeks of doing nothing. So they need to keep it up with some form of stress and activity. So there's a big difference between a well-trained athlete and possibly a novice or a beginner athlete in how they approach their training when it comes to a period of detraining. So the key point here is do something, um, particularly if you're a novice and you wouldn't be uh, have years of training under your belt. It's important to keep going with something, uh, keep going with body weight exercises and keep adding stress. There's also a detraining element of the components of, of fitness that you're training. So the type of component being trained will also influence the rate of detraining. So an example would be like uh, general aerobic training and strength training uh, tend to have longer lasting effects during a detraining phase compared to something like anaerobic power or key power kind of related components. Um, this could be seen, for example, when like a, a footballer would return to play from a layoff, 
the ability to reproduce those several sprints and high intensity boats uh, might be you know fairly lack lacking um you know but their one off strength efforts like you know uh, in in like a one off strength sport for example would be fairly well maintained so the eccentric strength that we spoke about before that lowering phase and the braking function uh, in athletes will first show reductions in strength that'll be the first thing you start to lose yet athletes who train using eccentric actions so muscle lengthening with control will show greater retention of acquired gains when that cessation occurs so you know basically all that eccentric training we're doing right now in in our homes is very very important so if you are a bodybuilder for example and muscle size gains like hypertrophy have taken place strength tends to be well maintained except where complete inactivity occurs so for example if it was bed rest or total immobilization as a result of like an injury or something um there is a there's a different uh loss in in different types of muscle fibers um but when total immobilization or bed rest would occur then you know you're really really fighting a battle then with the detraining element and you will lose virtually all components of fitness but no one really is doing that currently during covid thankfully uh a fairly significant period of detraining where no training occurs at all will eventually result in a return to baseline levels at least in a beginner or relatively untrained athletes so for well trained athletes the the time course of detraining will take much much longer than a novice athlete um a short detraining period may not be actually that detrimental to either a beginner or a well trained athlete and the layoff might actually improve them overall uh, i often tell our guys take a week off around christmas take two weeks off and it'll help them um so some key trends you'd see in detraining seem to be pretty evident and can be summarized as follows strength loss for all will occur when training ceases and the extent is generally determined by the period of prior training and the period of cessation so how long you've been training for up until the point you stopped and then how long you stopped for longer training periods will preserve strength during detraining better than shorter training periods so again how long you're training for if eccentric training is part of the strength program gains made are better maintained during the layoff period so big up for tempo work that that we do quite often here at activate uh strength in general can be well maintained for 2 or 3 weeks following training in many cases and if you continue with body weight and put some stress through the system you can maintain a hell of a lot more of it muscle size loss will occur as the layoff period continues you'll start to see those muscle muscles slightly atrophy and dr- drop back So when we look at detraining it can be summarized very very quickly in this little chart here. So what makes up and what what would tell us and give us some evidence around what level of detraining we're going to see with a layoff. Potentially you've taken a, a full break from the gym and you've done maybe you've stopped uh, any sort of uh, resistance training so that could be body weight squats for example if I take a simple example and you've said look I'm just going to take some time off the gym um during covid-19 and I'll go back to it when you know when I get back to when the gyms reopen again I'm just going to go walking for the next uh, the next 12 weeks um that would not be a good idea because we want to maintain some of the stimulus um and we'd have to look at what was the immediate training background so had you a couple of years of strength work of speed work of power development of aerobic fitness built up um do you, were you someone who who fair who was fairly um consistent in their training for a, for a period of years what we call that is training age okay um and what was your immediate training background just before the cessation so these are related your training age if you had a few years built up of training it's going to mean that you're it's going to take longer to lose any of those fitness components um how long is the layoff we're about 3 months into a covid-19 layoff and we're coming out the other side of it and getting back into gyms so we can look at it it was you know almost a 4 month layoff from certain gym environments so your training age before that would play into how long it takes you to get back those uh where you previously were and get back to what you were in march um and then the other thing we'd look at is the component stress so this is absolutely vital um particularly for uh we could take a couple of cohorts crossfit athletes and team sport athletes in particular uh when we look at the component stressed if we're talking about anaerobic power 
Um, so let's talk about footballers, repeated sprints. Um, I spoke about this in another video, what your training should look like returning to play. Repeated sprints, you're going to have to build that up because that's going to be lost fairly quickly in your layoff. Um, you might have kept some of it up, but with you know when you're when you're fatigued in a game and you're you're asked to do repeated sprints uh that's going to take a little bit of time to build back up and that should be part of your mini pre-season before going back to back onto the field um crossfit athletes for example i would be asking nobody to be doing um 30 second bouts on an air bike for example when you get back that anaerobic power just wouldn't be there and we wouldn't really be asking it to be an anaerobic task it would just turn straight away into an aerobic task because we wouldn't have a solid foundation. And we know from our principles of detraining that the component stressed that anaerobic power and capacity is one of the first uh, components that you lose and it's the quickest to lose. Now that's not to say it can be built back up, but it should be done in a fairly, uh, I suppose, a fairly well-measured way and a, a fairly smart way. You wouldn't go straight back into it. You'd start to build up that component once you have that solid base built up underneath so that's really one of the last principles of training we're going to speak about right now one of the most prevalent and a lot of people are worried about their gains um and losing them if you've been training for a while before this don't worry about it it'll come back in time it'll take a little bit of time to to get back to where you were uh it's not a good idea to completely give up um we did a previous video on this, how long it takes to lose strength in particular. I've already given you some examples from those studies. If you train for a good period of time beforehand, you're going to get it back quicker. But if your training age was fairly low, don't worry about it either. It means you still don't have much, you don't have too far to go to get back to where you were. And with a good coach by your side, you definitely get back to where you were in a lot faster time than if you were to sit on your hands and do absolutely nothing. Okay, so that's the principle of detraining. It's prevalent for people who have injuries uh, all the time. We, we see professional athletes who, who are detrained because of injuries and their return to play should take all this stuff into account. Um, particularly right now, more or less everybody is going to be going through this with COVID-19. And uh, like I said, a good coach will take these things into account and take the principles of training into account to build you back up to where you should be safely and effectively. Okay, guys, if you've got any comments or questions about any of this stuff at all, please feel free to comment below or like or share our video. Thanks, guys.